So ladies, are y'all ready for the I forgive me panel? If you are, put forgive in the chat. Put forgive in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and bring these beautiful ladies to the stage. I already see they already put their cameras on. They ready, y'all. Come on, Miss Carter. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Come on. Let's get into this conversation. And I forgot. Disclosure. Forgot to tell y'all to grab y'all pen. I don't even know if I said it, but your pen's a paper, but... Y'all forgot the ushers didn't show up the last two nights. So we got to get our own tissues. And if you need a fan, because, you know, sometimes when the Holy Spirit starts to do what he do, you just start. So I was sweating all right here. I'm like, God, Jesus, I, where's the fan at? You know, you need a fan. So we're going to go ahead and jump on. Ladies, just go ahead and introduce yourself real quickly before we jump into this panel discussion. We'll start with Ms. Carter. We'll go to Kamaya. Then we'll go to Ms. Uh, Gwendolyn. Good morning, ladies. Um, thank you, Marcia, for having me. I'm Keele Carter. I am the founder of the Keele Carter Experience, which is a community and a platform that I've built um, to just encourage women, uplift them, motivate them, inspire them, and push them into purpose. I always say living with purpose every single day, no matter what, because as women, we know we wear so many titles and roles, and we have so many expectations on us as mothers, wives, sisters, daughters, friends, all the things. And, you know, that doesn't stop us because sometimes we'll get overwhelmed with what we have going on in everyone else's life. And we forget what God has called us to do um, in the in the life of our own and in the lives of others. Um, so I enjoy that community with um, connecting with other women. Um, I'm also a mom of two boys. They keep me busy and a wife um, of one husband because that's all I can handle. <laughs> Um, but I'm just so thankful to be here. Um, and I'm just, I'm already being blessed by the conference. So thank you guys so much. My name is Kamaya McWilliams. I'm from, uh, Southwest Georgia, deep part of Georgia. Um, a mom of two, I got a baby girl and a baby boy, a wife. Uh, I would like to consider myself a writer. I love writing. I love journaling, like Miss April had mentioned, um, and then besides that, I do podcasts, a podcast called The Being of Her Podcast, where I love encouraging women to discover who they are in Jesus. And then, of course, I do uh, YouTube talking about healing, sharing the word of God. And then I'm active in ministry with photography. I do photography in church and outside of church. So I have my own photography business, Kamai Portraits, uh, where I cater to moms because I'm very passionate about uh, mental health addiction uh healing all of that good stuff and so yeah that's a little bit about me yes I'm a Keely come on like I'm a North Carolina girl but that that southern accent girl whoo yes you about to take us to the church you know <laughs> southern people know how to do church <laughs> I am Gwendolyn Cody Davis and thank you so much first of all to my mentee Aria Brown for exposed me to this conference and these wonderful ladies and Miss Marcia for gladly receiving me. I am originally from Thomasville, Georgia, so I got to check in with Miss Kavia, but because I'm a part of a military family, I haven't lived there since 1978, and I'm telling too much, I know, but anyway, that's when I graduated from high school. I was there for Easter, so I have to definitely connect with you. Um, I am the wife of one husband of 43 years, oh. and we are the parents of two adult saved sons, oh. two uh, a saved daughter in love, and three grandsons, twins, Nolan and Noah. They're about three months old, and Mr. Amir, who is a 10 months old. So this is a new season as a, in our lives as we uh, talked about in the breakout se session, being retired, being grandparents, empty nesters, all those things, but we're loving it. I am an author and a very brand new transformation coach. My assignment from the Lord is to help Christian women become the best version of themselves. And I'm doing it with prayer. I procrastinated for a long time saying that my program will begin later this year. That's just an excuse. That's just staying in my comfort zone. The Lord said, you got to give it a date, honey. 
so that you, you can get started. So we've already registered two people and I'm very happy about that and just happy to be here today. Thank you. Come on, that's how I'm gonna start introducing my kids. I have three save children. Like, I love that. I love how she said, it. <laughs> welcome. Yes, many blessings to everyone. I thank you guys for being here. Just y'all hear what they said. Their mothers, their wives, their business owners, they're in ministry. So for them to be here today, that's something special. That's sacrifice. You know, that's not, that's obedience to God. Because when God says do something, we can't question it. God, it's Saturday. That's when I do my errands. Oh, I wanted to go to brunch today. God said, what I, you better say yes to that woman. You, you make sure you say yes to that woman. So I thank you guys for your yes. Let's jump into this conversation. Guys, first question. What does forgiveness, forgiving yourself really look like? And we're going to start with Keely. We're going to start with you, Ms. Carter. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, forgiving myself, um, that was, that's been a journey for me. So um, my definition would be really just um, honoring how God sees me. Um, there were times where I didn't understand my story. I didn't understand the things that God had taken me through. I didn't understand why I had to go through them. Um, but you know, the Bible says that all things work together for his good. Um, and so even the things that I didn't understand, even the things that caused me pain, even the things that I was ashamed of, even the things that I was, you know, judged for, or felt like I wasn't good enough. Um, God has used those things to bring my voice to this place. Um, it's built me up to the woman that he has called me to be. And so forgiving myself is for me, seeing myself and honoring myself in who God has created me to be and, and just accepting who God called me to be and accepting myself as God accepts me. Um, so that's how I, how I was able to forgive myself. That's good. Oh, I love that. We're going to go take it over to you, Ms. Gwendolyn. I, I, I love that. And to add to that, I would just say, take your responsibility for your actions, forgiving yourself. You know, as humans, we play the blame game. And that's something that is old as life itself. In the Garden of Eden, Adam blamed God. He said, it's the woman you gave me. You know, I was doing just fine because you the one that thought I needed a match for me. I was doing just fine with the animals, but it was that woman that you gave me. And Eve said it was the serpent that the serpent that tempted me to eat the for, forbidden fruit. So we we get into a blame game. It's usually it's this person. It was my mama. It was my daddy. As a race of people, we say it was that person that kept me from getting. So we're always uh, kind of inclined. Uh, by human nature to blame someone. But when we can take responsibility for what we did not do right, and even after you ask God for forgiveness, how many know that you're going to do something wrong again? It's just life. I believe that's why we're still here, because we are not perfect. And so we have to understand that we all have flaws, um, and not to be so hard on ourselves and not try to jump to the next question that we cannot forgive ourselves. If we can forgive each other and if we can accept God's forgiveness, then we can forgive me. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, stop waiting. Because lady, transformational coach right there. Like somebody needs that. Come on, somebody need that session right there. Like, come on. What's the date? Just put it in the chat. Go ahead, Kamaya. I'm a um, I'm I'm real practical, and so that's how the Holy Spirit deal with me. And when it came to my own personal forgiveness, I realized I needed to forgive. Uh, when I lacked the ability to forgive those who was around me, just like Miss Gwendolyn had said, accepting God's forgiveness that he has poured out upon you and, and the love that the Lord has demonstrated on the cross. And so for me, I would say when we talk about in a practical sense, cause I'm a practical person, the four things that I had wrote down was um, number one, accepting God's grace and God's forgiveness, because I can't give you something that I haven't received. And sometimes we can be, we can self-sabotage the gifts that the Lord has poured out upon us. Cause we're not used to that. And so I'm just like, uh, it was somebody in the conference that mentioned, you know, having 
father issues and that's what I had so I was expecting the Lord to show up just like my earthly father was showing up and when I realized that's the way that I was showing up in my relationship with him I realized that I needed these practical steps and this is this come from reading the word of God first accepting God's forgiveness that he has pouring out upon you uh the second thing is confessing and communicating I think it's the book of James that says that if we confess our sins to one another, then we can pray for one another. And so a lot of times we can deny the fact that, you know what? Yeah, my mama, my daddy, my sister, my brother, they probably done did some things to me, but I done did some things to me that I need to forgive myself for. And just like Miss Gwendolyn said, it's easy for us to, you know, point the finger and play the blame game. But when you're able to look at yourself and not just focus on what other people done did to you, you realize that, okay, forgiveness is going to start here. It's not going to start with me forgiving my husband. It's not going to start with me forgiving my father, but it starts with me forgiving me and confessing that, you know what? I need to forgive myself. And then the third thing that I wrote down was the letting go. Um, in the book of Isaiah, I think it's 43. It says, the Lord says, remember not the former things don't dwell on the past. But then when you go to Isaiah 46, uh, it says, remember the former things. And I, so I think that sometimes we can, remember the past to the point where we're dwelling there and the Lord want us to remember the past only to the point that we can recognize that he was the God that was in our past. He is the God that is right here and he's going to be the God that's in our future. Just like the angels say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty who was and is and is to come. And so we need to learn how to let go of our past and not dwell in our past, but also remember the past to know that, okay, even when I was uh, neglected by my father, the Lord was in that. Even now, when I was when I was addicted, the Lord was in that. And even in my future, he's going to be there. And so that process of letting go. And then the fourth thing that I said was uh, repenting and renewing of the mind. Just like Miss April said, uh, we live in a society, not especially the generation that I'm I'm from. I'm born in 96. And we believe, you know, if they go low, go lower. We believe do them how they did us. We believe they don't deserve our forgiveness. And that mindset has to be renewed because it's being passed down throughout generations. Uh, it truly is. And one thing uh, the word of God says is that his people perish from the lack of knowledge. And if this is what I'm passing down to my children, if they hit you, hit them back. Uh, if they did you wrong, don't forgive them. Just cut them off. And I'm passing this knowledge down to my children. And so we're going to see a generation of children uh, living from a place of unforgiveness because we're, we haven't renewed our minds so that they can have a new mind and so they can pick up where we left off at and then of course repenting turning um away from our way of thinking towards forgiveness and I thought forgiving uh people that hurt me necessarily meant uh reconciling back to them and so we have to just be mindful the Lord forgives all of us the Bible says this but not everybody, unfortunately, is reconciled back to the father. And that's because we decide not to change uh, and, and turn from our ways to his. So, yeah. I talked a lot. Ooh. Wait, wait, y'all. Isn't she the shot one, though? Like, I'm confused. Like, sis, the way you... <laughs> Woo, Jesus. I, like last night, I'm looking for the rewind button. Can y'all help me find the rewind? Because we need to hear that like a couple of more times because she was talking some good... Thank you all. Like you guys all gave some great, like, oh, oh, geez, Holy Spirit, where do we go from here? God dang it. So let's talk about what, let's go more in depth with what hinders women from forgiving ourselves. We're going to start with Miss Gwendolyn. Um, I had written some notes wrong thinking and unrealistic expectations. Oh, my God. <laughs> because uh, let's just take it to the other side of the house. When you're talking about setting goals, for example, you want to have realistic goals. Otherwise, you know you're not going anywhere. That's going to only discourage you even more. So when you um, you feel that you, you something is hindering you from forgiving yourself is wrong, they call it stinking thinking. Is something that's been embedded in us, maybe from a little girl, and it has taken, it's, it's now a stronghold, and it's the wrong perspective, and it's unrealistic, un expectations. Someone has already said that we as women, okay, we're nourishers, we're life givers, we take a load on ourselves. 
We cannot say no to anyone at any time. We carry the family. We carry the community. We carry the church. We carry the ministry. Uh, we carry the strays. We, we've we seen that in our grandmothers, some of us, in our great aunties, some of us. And we've also seen them, you know, get sick and suffer because of not able to take, take care of themselves. So there are those hindrances that should not be. And then there's that, what I mean about wrong thinking is, um, my pastor says it all the time that, um, God is not trying to, you know, get you. He's trying to get something to you. So he's not out to get you. He's out to bless you. So we're thinking that, oh, you know what I mean? We picture God all wrong. We picture him as being an old man sitting up there saying, oh, oh she did something wrong again. Here I go. I'm going to zap her up there. I'm going to zap her up there. And those things take strongholds in our minds. They were never true, and they're not true now. They're a myth, and we need to get to the truth of the matter. You would never be free unless you get to the truth. So unrealistic expectations. No, I'm not a superwoman. No, I'm not every woman. I'm one woman. I'm God's woman. I want to be used by him. Yes, he anointed me. I'm not doing this on my own, but I'm no fool either. And you don't find that out until after you've been around the block for a few times, ladies. So if they had the light bulb hadn't come on yet, you all are my daughters. You're, you're young enough to be my daughters. Don't get discouraged. Just keep on living. And you will see that this testimony will still stand. You're not everybody. You are one person chosen, but you can't even save everybody. You got to do your part on your corner of the earth. I'll do my part. This one does their part. If we all do our part, it's going to be okay. But you can't do everything. And don't let anything or anyone be a hindrance for you to forgive yourself or don't care the extra weight. You need to be light as a feather to get this assignment done. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I can't even speak. Like, you just dropped the whole mic and then you're just going to say that's all you you said a whole lot. Like, I'm looking for my, sh like, like, you about to have me like last night. You about to make me break my screen because I'm about to throw my shoe. Like, where's the altar? I need to go put some money on the altar right now. God, Miss Gwendolyn. Ooh. I need y'all to go ahead and put in the chat. I'm only one woman. Oh, there go the shoe. Oh, thank you for the shoe, girl. Thank you for the shoe. I'm only oh, one woman. Lord right now. <laughs> thank you. you know, Holy Spirit just, I just heard this in my spirit. Now, I said that all of you guys are going to get the replay. Everyone who attended the conference will get the replay. I, I'm going to break up every session. So from the morning to this session, it's going to be broken up. I definitely encourage you. We need to change the conversations at the dinner table. We need to change the conversations at the family gathering. Forget about let's go to dinner. Come on, come to my house. We're going to watch this video together and we're going to pray. I'm going to have some discussions. Like this is how we break generational uh, curses. This is how we change conversations. This is how we invite God into everything that we do. Like, so I encourage you guys, like, I don't care. Like, this is not about anything. This is not about money. This is not about nothing. Share this. I don't care if it's just your girlfriends. Like, come on, girl, it's Friday. Come on, let's come together. We're going to watch this session real quick. Then we're going to talk about it. Then we're going to pray about it. Like, I definitely encourage you. And then we're going to go over to, uh, is it? Uh, so I'm so bad with names, y'all. So please, uh, he didn't give me that gift. Um, is it Kamiya or Kamaya? It's Kamaya. Kamaya. Go ahead, Kamaya. So, uh, Mother Gwendolyn is on it. She literally be saying what I want to say, what the Lord gave me to say. But that that um unrealistic expectations that we put on ourselves, but most of all, what we put on other people and what we put on on, on the Lord, I feel like that's what hinders a lot of us from experience forgiveness and we stay in unforgiveness because for me I lost my biological dad in a real quick story when I was in the ninth grade he did not raise me he raised my older sister and by the time I'm having children on my own I realized I harbor uh unforgiveness 
And my expectation was, God, you need to bring him down here um, because I need to have a conversation. If we can have a conversation and I don't hear him say he's sorry for not being there, not raising me, allowing another man to raise me, live in a household where I was dealing with rejection, I'm not going to forgive him. And it took me being in a place of depression where the Lord dealt with me. And he said, oh, I'm going to cry. Lord have mercy. Girl, let her rip. Let her rip, girl. Come on. Bring it out. Come on, sis. Oh, Holy Spirit, how you way? God is so strong, girl. God is so strong. Let it out, girl. This is freedom. The Lord said, in the same way that I sent my son to die for him, I sent my son to die for you so that you may not live in unforgiveness. And the Lord told me, I already said, sorry. My son said, sorry on the cross. I said, sorry for him. And I realized he would never come back. He would never come back. I would never have a conversation. And I realized waiting for that conversation, it was it was keeping me in bondage and unforgiveness where I couldn't give it to myself, where I wasn't receiving the forgiveness that the Lord and the grace that the Lord was pouring out, has pouring out for me on the cross. And so for a lot of us, we have this unrealistic expectation. I got to have a conversation. They got to say they sorry. Uh, they have to say that they apologize. The behavior with them has to change in order for me to forgive them. And I realized that a lot of us stay in unforgiveness because our expectation is unrealistic. It's, it's unrealistic to think that somebody is going to be raised for the, from the dead just to say that they are sorry to you. Or, you know, your, your mama going to come back around and, and, and say sorry. We put these unrealistic realistic expectations. <sighs> we put these unrealistic expectations on people and then we put these unrealistic expectations on God because you won't bring him back or because you didn't allow him to live to see me 27 years old two children and married oh you must not care about me you must not care about um my forgiveness and so I feel like this that, that has a lot to do with why a lot of us live from that place of unforgiveness because we put these unrealistic expectations even if they don't say sorry you still deserve to be healed and, and you still deserve to give that for, they still deserve to give that forgiveness because the Lord has given it to you. It is a gift that we receive. It's not a gift that we are born with. So the Lord told me, who are you to say who don't deserve your forgiveness? Because even I am unworthy of the grace that the Lord has poured out upon me because I am a sinner. I fall short. I have fallen short as a parent. Yeah, I may be raising my children with my husband doing things a little bit different than my mama did it, but I have failed. I have gotten angry with my children. You know, I done did some things that when my children get older, me and them gonna have to sit face to face and have a conversation. And if you're not even, even able to stand in that, that once upon a time, yo, and this goes back to being able to, to look at each other and look beyond each other's faults and see our needs. He was a little boy hurt. And how can he give me something that wasn't given to him? How can I, how can I allow my children and give my children the space and opportunity to vocalize their self when it wasn't given to me? And so the Lord says, I want to change that. And for a lot of us, he's changing that. He wants to free us from, 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 uh, these unrealistic expectations, living in unforgiveness and, and, and just looking at people, our parents, people that don't hurt us, looking at their faults instead of looking beyond that is being with them how God sees them and seeing them. The Lord seen my father as a hurt little boy that wasn't in a position to raise a hurt little girl. But instead we get stuck in that place and we live from unforgiveness. And then the, the first thing that I had put on my notes was um just unforgiveness towards other people. The Bible says that one of the fruits of, well, no, love is patient, kind. It don't hold records of wrongdoing. And so if I'm unable to forgive you, how can I forgive myself? And so a lot of us live in unforgiveness because we, we lack the ability to forgive each other. We live from that place of forgiving each other, condemning each other so constantly. Really how you feel about, about you show up um, in how you treat other people. And so I realized my unforgiveness towards my father, it was beyond him. It was my unforgiveness towards myself. 
And once I stood in that, just like Ms. Gwendolyn said, and took accountability that you done did some messed up stuff that you gonna have to apologize to some people and you need forgiveness and grace, your father needed it too. Your mother needed it too. And so if I die for you to receive it, go out and give it. It ain't yours to give or to withheld, withhold from anybody. And so un unrealistic expectation and unforgiveness towards other people will keep us from living in forgiveness and being able to forgive ourselves. Oh, Holy Spirit. Hmm. Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. Oh God, we just take a moment, just take a pause, oh God, just to thank you for what's happening in this place, oh God. Father God, we thank you that your presence is here, oh God. Father God, we feel it, oh God. Father God, for we know what your word says, as it is written, that when two or three are gathered together, that you are in the mix, oh God. So Father God, we thank you that this is a place of healing, oh God. We thank you that this is a place of restoration, oh God. Father God, I just ask that you search everyone's heart right now, oh God, and expose to them, Father God, any unforgiveness that they may be hard in Jesus name oh God father God I just ask that you bring them to their knees oh God father God help them humble themselves but most importantly father God help them remember who you are help them remember what your son did on the cross oh God father God help them let go of their expectations of what their mother their father their sister their brother their husband or whoever should have done oh God help them see you in all things and trust and believe in your word oh God for your word says that in this world World, that we will have many trials and tribulation but we can take heart because Jesus has overcome the world so no matter what someone did to us no matter what someone said to us we are overcomers oh God your word also says that what the enemy meant for evil you're working it out for our good your word says oh God that you make all things work for our good oh God so father we just thank you for this moment oh God we, we thank you for this moment Jesus Ooh, don't let this moment pass anyone by, oh God. Don't let this moment pass anyone by, oh God. So Father, we just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Ooh. Jesus. We're going to go ahead and take it to Ms. Carter. And the question is, we asked earlier, what do forgiving yourself look like? But I want to go into this conversation with asking, what does it sound like? Like when you haven't, for, like when you are walking in unforgiveness about yourself, because sometimes I don't think, I don't think people understand that there is that hindrance, like they, like someone hurt them and they have forgiven. They feel like they've forgiven the person and they let go. But the part that they haven't done is forgiven themselves. So what does it sound like? Ooh, okay. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I wasn't ready. Um, and I'm trying not to cry because I'm watching Kamaya. I'm listening to Kamaya. And um I was trying to get myself together and I was like, I hope she don't call on me next. But um it's just one, I just want to take a minute to honor how God works. Um I always say. Your purpose is connected to someone else's destiny. I always say that because I because I believe that God works in a way that all of us have someone attached to our assignment. All of us have someone attached to our purpose. And when we're obedient and saying the things that may hurt us, like Amaya said, when we're obedient and being transparent in the moments that we may not have healed from, we're healing someone else. Um, and so listening to Kamaya. My story was your story, sis, and that's why I say you weren't you weren't alone. Um, to Marcia's question, what does it sound like? Sometimes it sounds like silence and tears. Sometimes it sounds like hurt. Sometimes it sounds like frustration. Sometimes it sounds like disappointment. Sometimes it sounds like anger. Sometimes it it doesn't sound like anything that you may understand um being hurt by other people um being held in the bondage of unforgiveness um 
you know, they say that the true meaning of forgiveness is relieving that person of ever having the responsibility to apologize because the forgiveness is really not for them. It's for you. Um, and as long as you hold on to that, you're giving them the power and the authority to have this chain connected to you and hold you in bondage until you let that go. Um, and so my, my story with Kamaya is I'm watching her, but I'm, I'm also watching myself and seeing how God has brought me through that unforgiveness and that hurt that I was going through. Um, my father was not a part of my life. He came in and out, came in and out. Um, and I hated it, but God blessed my mom to marry someone when I was seven years old who accepted me. <clears throat> he became the best father I could possibly ask for. Um, in 2021, we lost him and I was angry. Um, I'm listening to Kamaya talk about when he died, when my stepfather died, I called him, I, I, I prayed to God. I was like, you, to me, I felt like he took the wrong man. The one who stepped up and became a father to me, raised me, showed me your grace, gave me a foundation of faith, took me to church, raised me to be who I am, who you've called me to be. You took him and the one that is still here to hurt me, who is still hurting me, the one who still doesn't want a relationship with me, with my kids, that hurts. So I have to still live with him being here on this earth every single day while grieving the one who loved me. And so working through that unforgiveness is a constant battle. Um, I, be I didn't believe in therapy at first, but um, Jesus and therapy, has been my savior. I always say Jesus first, then therapy. Um, but forgiving myself took a lot of forgiving others. Um, Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving them just as Christ forgives you. So, but sometimes we say, oh God. <laughs> sometimes we say that, and it's easy for us to, you know, say it when it comes to others. But where does the compassion and the kindness come when it comes to yourself? Where does forgiving yourself come in? God also forgave you. So who am I to say I'm not worthy of forgiveness? Who am I to say I'm not worthy of love? Who am I to say I'm not worthy of compassion? Who am I to say these things when God has already, he's already said it in his word. He's already spoken in his word. So when we get in his word, who are we to say, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I can't be this. I can't say this. I don't deserve this. When God has already written it out, he's already, he's already given it to you. He he's already paid the price. So if I, if I, a prime example, I go out and buy a new car. I turn in my old car. They have the keys to my old car. I have the old keys to my old car. Can I go to this new car and open up the new the door to the new car with the old car doors? No, with the old car keys? No, I can't. Because I've already given that. They've already purchased it. God has already purchased your life. He's already given his for yours. So who are you to take that forgiveness back? Who are you to say, oh God, I know that you've done this, but I don't deserve it. He's already declared that you deserve it. So it's not for you, it's not for you to decide whether you're worthy or not. He's already paid the price for that. And so sometimes forgiving yourself looks like and sounds like the pages of this. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like flipping through and saying, God, what do you say about me? God, what have you done for me? God, what are the things that you want to show me? And that's how we move forward. So Kamai, I just want to thank you because. You blessed me in ways that you didn't even understand. Um, and Miss Gwen, everybody, Marcia, this whole thing. I'm, I'm, I told myself I was not going to cry today, but God, I thank you for the tears. I thank you for the tears of freedom. I thank you for the tears of forgiveness in this moment. So thank you. Thank you. Just thank you. Says we thank you because that was everything. Like, you, you, you. <laughs> You guys said we shouldn't have unrealistic expectations, right? 
and that we should trust God in all things. Sometimes we have this picture in our minds of what our mothers should be like, fathers should be like, our husbands, our kids. And sometimes when our mothers are like, I'm a fatherless child too. So sometimes when our fathers are not in our lives and we crave that, we want that, we try to do any and everything to make this person see us, to make this person like you, like, oh, you're amazing. You're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. But one thing about God that I know for sure is a God is a restorer, right? Our, like literally when he said, I make all things work for your good what the enemy meant for evil. So our father's not being in our lives was what the enemy meant for evil. God is working it out for our good. And God is, he literally just wants us to let go so we can see what he has already done because he has already been working. He had all, he's already figured, we don't have to figure it out because he already worked it out. So it looks like your mother marrying that man who is your father. So it might not be your biological father, but he put a man in your life that's your father, a man that loves you, a man that cares for you, a man that sees you, a man that will make sacrifices for you. And all God wants is trust me. Don't trust the world. Don't trust what you see like, oh, your friend, their father's in their life. They're... Don't worry about that because this is your path. I don't need you to focus on anything else but me and trust me in that. The word of God also says, I will pay you back for everything that you lost. Like what's to come is greater than what we have already walked through. That's his promise. So even though my father is not in my life, even though my brother's girlfriend killed him at 22, even though I was molested as a child, even though I can smile, I can have peace, I can have joy because God provides everything that I need. God has already worked it out. Even though I didn't get that job. Oh, I went to that job interview, right? And everything seemed perfect. Y'all know the job interview, everything. Oh man, they giving me what I want, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they call you and, or send you an email to say, oh, we went with another applicant. That is not a time for me to sit there and say, oh, I must have did something wrong or maybe I need more. My God, I know that you are able, God, because when you close one door, you open another door. I know no only means next opportunity because God sees when your friends walk out of your life and you're like, wow, what's wrong with me? No, God saw their heart. Where God is trying to take you, they're not in a space to go to where God is trying. It's nothing against them. They're just not at the place that God needs them to be in your life at this time. So God, even when I'm alone, I'm not alone because you are there with me. Like literally you start meeting random people and you'd be like, wow, it seems like I've known this person for years. Like I have a, I know I've, I've had girlfriends in my life. I've known for over 10 years and you can meet one person and seem like you've known one day, one day conversation. I felt like I know, you know me. I know you. I don't have to prove myself. I don't have to dim my light. I don't have to silence my voice. Guys, we have, and it's so, it's so easy and we make it so hard. It's so easy, but we make it so hard, but we have to trust. God, I just got a question before we move on. Has he ever failed you? Like literally his word says he will never leave or forsake you. Let's think about it. Has he ever failed you? But when you trusted in the world, when you trusted in man, how many times did they fail you? One day somebody say they like you. The next day they don't like you. I tell people all the time, people change their feelings like they change their draws. So if you're putting everything into someone, then that's why your feelings are all over the place. One day you happy, one day you sad. Because you're putting your trust into someone who was never meant to carry what you have. God never fails. I tell people all the time, try Jesus. I promise he will never fail you. I promise he will never fail you. It may look like, Ooh, that's all. It may look like you're surrounded, but you're only surrounded by him. Jesus. I wasn't ready for y'all. Like, I know y'all was powerful, but I, I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready for, like, tissue, fire extinguishers to put out all the bombs y'all didn't drop. Like, I wasn't 
ready for y'all. Whew. We're going to take a brief. We're going to go ahead and take a few minutes because we want to be respectful of people's time as we begin to transition. But I want to just give time if anyone wants to ask a question to the three panelists, if anyone just want to say something to the ladies, a comment, um, just please take yourself off of mute. We'll take two people. All right, then I guess I will go. Um, definitely, I needed to run to the store and get some more tissues because I use all the tissues in the house. And all of y'all just came through and y'all let God use y'all. I mean, I grew up in a household with a, a father. And to hear women that did not grow up with a father that was physically in the house, but they had a father that was sitting high and looking low. Mm -hmm. And y'all are some powerful women. And I just want to tell y'all, thank you for allowing God to use y'all. Because seriously, like the tissues, <laughs> I've used them all because just to hear y'all stories, to hear y'all testimonies, like if people don't believe in God, listen to the three of y'all talk because you can see them, you can hear them, and you can feel them. So thank y'all. As um, we wait for the next person, I, I definitely want to thank you guys for your transparency, because just like April said earlier, when we allow ourselves to show up as who we just who we are, like we don't hold back. Like if you need to cry, you need to cry. It allows people to show up as who they are. Like sometimes we live in this world where we think we have to have all these boxes checked before we show up. But when God is just saying, just show up like. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have all the boxes checked. You don't have to have all the qualifications. You don't have to have all the initials behind your name. You don't have to have all the zeros in your bank account. I just need you. Let me take care of everything else. Because see, you can't, you don't see what I see. You say you're not qualified. I, I already called you qualified before you was, before you even came into this world. You say that you're not chosen. I already called you chosen. The world can't see what I see. So the world may say that you're not you're you're not chosen because you you're a fatherless child, because you got molested, because you had a bankruptcy, because you got a divorce. But I am the one who formed you in your mother's womb before you were even born. So don't worry about what the world says. Worry about what God says. Holy Spirit put this in my he, he dropped this in my spirit one day. And he said, This is how you need to start responding to people. When you go to places and people wonder why you're there or who sent you, or they have a problem with who you are now, because there are times, God is always changing us. So we have to introduce ourselves to reintroduce ourselves to people. And people always want to say, oh, you acting brand new, you acting funny, oh, you change, you know, whatever, whatever. So when people start having an issue with who you are becoming, who you are, and they start to question you, be like, don't question me, question him. Like, you don't have to answer them. Like, you don't owe them anything. If they have an issue of who you are, all you say to them is, go talk to the Holy Spirit. Go, they, he sent me. He told me to do it. Go talk Go talk to the Holy Spirit. That's between you and Holy Spirit. That has nothing to do with me. I'm just doing what he told me. I'm just being obedient. Like, literally. And listen, guys, I don't care who it is. Because a lot of times the enemy uses those close to our mothers, our fathers, our husbands, our sisters, our brothers, our aunties, our best friends. Yeah, straight up, go talk to Holy Spirit. Because if you're meant to be in my life, you're still going to be here. If you're not meant to be in my life, bye. Because God provides everything. That's walking in God provides everything I need, meaning even the people in your life. Because just because you're my mother, yes, I'm going to love you and I'm going to honor you. But that doesn't mean that you have to be in my life. And this is real. This is real. Because if people are not willing to do the things that God is telling them to do, then all they're going to do is hinder the things that God has put inside of you. So you have to make a choice. Are you going to be committed to them because they're your mother, your father, your da da da? Are you going to be committed to God and trust God in that? Final thoughts, ladies, before we transition, because I'm going to just put myself on mute. I just want to say uh, as a word of encouragement for everyone 
that's on the Zoom call that's thinking that they have not accepted their calling. And the reason being that they're not qualified to do it, they hadn't, they don't have the letters behind their names, as you said, the alphabet soup. And, you know, they don't have all these kinds of things. They don't look like the next person. Know that your ministry is your misery. And we're still on a journey, as you can see. We're still on a journey. We don't have all the boxes checked. There might be still a drop or an ounce of forgiveness. We need to extend to someone or to ourselves. So God uses us as vessels because he knows just where we are. The anointing is not for us, it's for you. And so I want you that this on the call to say, you know, um, you know, we've already talked about it in our breakout session, and we are praying that people will be placed in their uncomfort zone so they will get on and line up to what God has called them to do. The devil will have you to wait to doomsday because he don't want you to operate. He don't want you to be obedient. But if you have a calling in your life, seek God and go right out. He's not going to call you to do something and have no one for you to help. Thank you. I'm just thankful for each and every one of y'all. I really am. And I'm thankful for this amazing opportunity. I done met some powerful women. And um, I'm just thankful. I just thank God for y'all. That's that's all I got to say. I'm also thankful for this opportunity. Um, I was definitely like, I don't even know where Marcia found me from. But Lord, I thank you. <laughs> uh, because I've been, when you pray for people, when you pray for God to send the people that's connected to your purpose and the people who are like-minded, he will send those people. Um, so I'm thankful for this space. Um, and like Ms. Gwendolyn said, stop waiting. Um, procrastination is the audacity that God has given you to tomorrow to do it, to next month to do it, to next year to do it. When you don't know when your expiration date is, none of us know the day or the time that God is going to call us home. So for us to think that we have tomorrow, next week, next year, to do what he's called us to do, today is the day. Um, and stop allowing people to hold you back. We talked about, you know, forgiveness, but stop allowing people to hold you in that old spot. Like Marcia said, am I acting brand new? I am. So whoever you remember, yes, I did those things. You can talk about them. Yes. It, you know, they, they say it might be tea to you, but it's, a, it's my testimony. So yes, I did those things. Yes. You seen me in the club. Yes. You, yes. I used to drink with you. Yes. I used to party with you. Yes, I did. Yes. I did all those things, but I'm not that person anymore. And you can't hold me to be that person. You can't hold me. You can't hold me hostage to that identity anymore. So stop allowing people to keep you where you're not, you're not supposed to be belonging anymore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies, so much. I just pray a special prayer of protection over you all's family, over you all's ministry, over you all's finances and health for everything that you did in this place. I pray that no repercussions or retaliation come against you. I pray that God continues to strengthen you and you remember who your father is and to whom you belong. I command your destiny helpers to come before you right now in the name of Jesus to continue to lead you to the things of God. I pray that God surround you with people who will speak life over you, people who will pray for you and not talk about you, people who will not allow you to dim your light or silence your voice. I pray, oh God, that you receive God's favor in everything. I pray that you walk into rooms that you are not even naturally qualified for. Oh God, I thank you, oh God, that they will be the generational curse breakers of their generation, that they will walk into the promised land and lead their families and others and their families into the promised Land. Father God, I thank you for their lives. I thank you for their gift and I thank you for their anointing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, ladies. 